Welcome to Book Talk Bite Me Balance with Julie Albert and Lisa Gannat. My name is Christian Mehta and I'm the Assistant Vice President of Engagement at Ryerson University. We are really excited about this new webinar series for Ryerson alumni and friends and we can't wait to hear about the amazing Bite Me Balance cookbook written by Ryerson alum, author Julie Albert and her sister, the culinary whiz, Lisa Gnatt. I wanna start this event by acknowledging the land upon which Ryerson is located. Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship and respect. Now, I want to cover a few housekeeping items before I introduce uh, Julie and Lisa to you. This webinar is going to be recorded so and is available online afterwards. So if you miss something, you can always go back and view it. All of your mics and videos are off. So if you have questions, please send them via the Zoom Q&A feature and we will address them at the end of the discussion. Today, Julie and Lisa are gonna show us how to make a delicious Thai chicken noodle soup. For guests cooking alongside at home, we'd love to see your masterpiece. So you're gonna send a photo of your soup with to us on Instagram or Twitter. Be sure to tag us at Ryerson underscore alumni and at bite me more. And use the hashtags, are you alumni and bite me balance. All right. Finally, we will be announcing two winners of the bite me balance book draw at the very end of this event. Okay, so now I'm thrilled to introduce you to the authors of the Bite Me Balance cookbook. Julie Albert and Lisa Gnatt are the saucy duo behind the blog Bite Me More and best-selling cookbooks Bite Me, Bite Me Too, and Lick Your Plate, and their founders of Bite Me Digital Agency. Julie, the writerly sister who dreams in fonts and future tense, attended McGill University, Keio University in Tokyo, and Ryerson School of Journalism. She lives in Toronto with her husband and three kids. Lisa, the sister with the bionic sense of taste and perfect palate, studied pastry arts at George Brown College and ran a successful baking business before she started writing cookbooks. She lives just five blocks away from Julie in Toronto with her husband and three kids. She's in my bubble. She's in, yeah, she's in your bubble, absolutely. Yeah. I wish she was in my bubble. She doesn't <laughs> want to be in my bubble, Christian. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take you, Lisa, anytime. <laughs> Bite Me Balance is Julie and Lisa's newest cookbook. It's an approachable, fun, and funny roadmap to help guide you towards a perfect, healthy, and happy balance. Julie, Lisa, welcome. Let's talk about your cookbook. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be here. Oh, it's our pleasure and honor. Okay, so first let's start off. Tell us why this cookbook uh, is important right now and why, what inspired you to really write it? Well, this, so this is our fourth cookbook and it really is the compilation of all of our learnings to date. Um, really, the number one question we were getting asked was, how do you have dessert and close your pants? You know, if that's your number one question, there's clearly a need to understand how to find that balance between healthy, wholesome, everyday eats and the occasional treat. And our philosophy is, if you're going to eat a cookie, eat the best cookie, eat, and you'll only need one of them. You don't need to chow down on a sleeve of Oreos or whatever. Not no slight to Oreo because those are <laughs> delicious, but um, really like we we approach things seventy five percent healthy, twenty five percent better, and that's reflected throughout the book. Um, we love to eat. We love to bring family and friends together when we're allowed to, um, and it's really about you know setting people up for success in the kitchen and at the table. We don't tell people they have to grow their own vegetables, nor do they need to make an eight hour stop um, a la Martha and I'll 
I'll circle back to Martha later because I got a joke about her. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if you're going to find it that funny, Christian. But um, yeah, I mean, it's really about just getting people in the kitchen cooking. Lisa, as you said, is the recipe maven. So I get to ride on her coattails and talk into a wooden spoon. <laughs> well, listen, I uh, spent some time actually making some of the recipes in here. And I have to say, not only are they super easy at times, but also they're really delicious. Like, honestly, I know I'm going to be coming back to for more Thank of the you. same, but, so all, <laughs> but also I can't wait to try uh, more, especially the sweet stuff, as uh, as you mentioned, Julie, they are a real treat in there. So I have a question about this notion of um, wholesome daily eats and delectable occasional treats. Yeah. How important is it really to maintain a balance? I think, you know, like I said in the book, moderation is like the granny panties of the diet world it's not very sexy it is not like you know there's no magic bullet and i you know we know we understand that balance is different for everyone but what we're trying to do is provide that roadmap in order to to allow you to have your cake and actually have a bite or two of it too so or a slight a, a small slice you know we, we we really think life without dessert is a little bit sad and so we're not prescribing anything as far as don't eat this or eat that. It's just really more the idea of eating healthier on a more regular basis and moving a little bit more as well. Yeah, so absolutely. I can do lunches in the kitchen <laughs> while I talk to Krishna. While stirring, while, uh, while chopping, while He's shredding. very talented, multi, yeah. Yeah, well, this is a writer. This is what you learn when well, you learn. Well, this is what you went to school for. Exactly. I'm very proud and grateful Ryerson grad. So, yeah, I I am so delighted that you are one of ours. Uh, here's a, here's another question for you though. What uh, are some of your tips and tricks for setting one's oneself up for success, not just in the kitchen but also at the table? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> are you trying to stop me, Christian? Yep. There are so many. Uh, be prepared. So the idea of Planning. being like a, was I talking? <laughs> being like a Girl Scout. So as I, as I said, planning, plan ahead, you know, look at what you want to do for the week, try to shop. You know, every recipe in our book is really, the ingredients are very accessible. So you can go to your local grocery store and really get everything that you need. We're not saying, you know, make 12 different stops at specialty shops. And we're not sending you on a on a you know wild goose chase for fig paste. So I'm sure that would be delicious. Fig paste is great. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, it, so be prepared. Um, be flexible. So if if you're looking to you know if if your family you're cooking for the family and someone doesn't like one thing and someone likes another, let people customize. Have ways to bring it together. So very much like this soup that allows people to kind of, you know, pick do it cheese. their way. I love it. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good way to also get everyone to kind of feel like they're part of the process of creating or For sure, exactly. And and uh, maybe owning their own own uh, creation and meal. That's that's a really good point. All right, I want to start cooking. You want to start cooking? Okay. Well, I want you to start cooking. <laughs> Talking before stick. before before you go though before you get started just a couple of things for everyone watching remember to submit your questions in the zoom q a feature that's where i'll be selecting um questions for julie and lisa afterwards and uh remember that at the end we're going to be giving away two cookbooks so stay tuned to the very end to see if we draw your name all right what's on the menu julie lisa Okay, Hi. so it's, it's power lunch time, and lunch, unlike what Gordon Gecko said, lunch is not for wimps. We love lunch, <laughs> and so Lisa here is putting together. It's going to show us how to put together this super comforting, delicious meal in a bowl. It's filling, it's flavorful, it's fragrant, and it's healthy. Exactly. Um, and we have eleven minutes and thirty-seven seconds to show you. So if we go on a little bit of high speed at one point. Um, just know that uh, 
we're doing it for the sake of time. But it is a very simple, quick recipe, and you can definitely get this done in 12 minutes. Well, so ish. we're merging Thai. I don't need to keep talking into the spoon, do I? Um, we're merging Thai and Jewish cooking here. So we've got the Thai chicken noodle soup. And you'll see also in your package, we've set four other easy lunchtime recipes from the book, but have at it, Lee. Okay, so over medium high heat, you're gonna heat one tablespoon of olive oil. Two tablespoons a day of olive oil in your diet will lower your blood pressure. I need, a, I need like the whole jug. <laughs> so once that's heated up, we're gonna add one red pepper that's been chopped up. Bye. So I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks as we go through. Let but, me just add all the... But it was about the red pepper. We're going to go back to the red pepper, but we're going to add all the ingredients for the five minutes so that they can stir. You can stir for five minutes. Okay. So we have two shallots that have been sliced up. And I love shallots. They're super sweet. And two garlic cloves. So now you can stir and speak. Okay. So everybody, with your red bell peppers... Did you know they have four times as much vitamin C as an orange? So get eating those. And when shopping for your, oh, she, look, see what she just did there? I'm the older sister and she just took over. Um, when you're buying your red bell peppers, give them a, don't be shy to shake them. If you hear the seeds, they're actually past their prime. So you want to buy, the, I know Christian liked that one. I it saw was a he, good tip. He gave the approval nod. Christian, you're on mute, so I can't, we can't read lips. That's our, probably <laughs> our- I'm taking notes. Oh, okay. Excellent. So yes, you want it to be a smooth and heavy pepper for its size and shake it up, baby, shake it up. As for shallots, it takes 18 pounds of fresh shallots to make a pound of dried. Wow. Take that one to the bank, people. So you're gonna to continue to stir this for five minutes. And all you want to happen is for the shallots, garlic, red pepper to soften and they become sweeter and it just adds flavor. If this were Smell-O-Vision, you'd be really happy right now um, and hope you're cooking with us. Shallots have lots of fiber, vitamins, antioxidants. So go crazy, nibble on a shallot. As for the garlic cloves, have you heard that if you shove one up your nose, it can help with congestion? That is the fantastic question. is not <laughs> writing that one down, which I find surprising because it was a tip. It's I'll, a tip. Uh, I'll have to do a little Google search later. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so to the soup now, we're gonna add a third of a cup of peanut butter, smooth peanut butter, and did you know? Oh, here we go that in surveys, East Coasters, people on the East Coast like smooth peanut butter, as do women and children. People on the West Coast favor crunchy, as do men. I must be a man living on the West Coast because I like crunchy peanut butter. Okay, well, we're gonna also add, <laughs> no, 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 hang on. <laughs> we're also gonna add, two tablespoons of red curry paste, and that brings in the heat. So it's not too spicy, but if you find that, you know, somebody can't take too much heat, add a little bit less. And then we have two teaspoons of grated fresh ginger. Yum. So that Jew is gonna stir up for one minute. Okay, so I have one minute also to tell you that peanut butter was the secret behind Mr. Ed talking like that. They used to put peanut butter in the horse's mouth if you're old enough to know who Mr. Ed is, like we are. <laughs> Um, as well, it takes approximately 540 peanuts. I really should have been the new host of Jeopardy, just saying. Um, make you rest in peace. We love Alex Trebek. Um, 540 peanuts to make a 12 ounce jar of peanut butter. That's actually interesting. I didn't know that. Actually, like, actually, because everything else I've been saying is so uninteresting. No, no, she's always interesting. So to this, we're going to add five cups of chicken broth. And you're going to bring this to a boil. One, whoops, sorry. It's okay. Did I splash you? Nope. Once it comes to a boil, you're going to lower it to a simmer and it's going to simmer for 10 minutes. At that point, after the 10 minutes, your soup is basically done. We're going to add a few things in to finish it off, but that's how quickly all of this happens. Did you see how easy that was? Now, here's the joke portion in the, in the, um, in the lesson. Brace yourself. What's Martha Stewart's recipe for chicken soup? First boil the chicken, then dump the stock. 
<laughs> it's good to laugh at your own jokes. Okay, Christian, I'm sorry, but our timer has disappeared. So you're going to have to give us the old. Yeah, I will. You have a couple. You have about three minutes. Okay, oh, three minutes. I have so much. Okay, time. so before she says oh. anything, we are going to just talk quickly about the rice noodles. So while your while your soup is simmering, you're going to cook the rice noodles, and most of the rice noodles will say on the package. Um, you know, depending on the thickness of them, but these ones are very thin and they just take one minute to cook. You drain them. Oh, oh, I was not expecting that. You drain them and then um, that's it. You're just gonna set them aside. And they're gluten-free for those of you who are concerned about gluten. Um, rice noodles are gluten-free and they're also egg-free. So to, to finish the soup up, once it's simmered for the 10 minutes, this is a fake 10 minutes, um, we are going to add two cups of shredded chicken breast. And that you can get off a, uh, an oven roasted chicken from the store. Like super easy. Simple. Um, we have one cup of coconut milk. Coconut milk is super interesting. And I have some facts about that. Am I allowed to tell them? In three ingredients, you can. Okay. We have two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of lime juice, uh, and as well lime zest in there, and then two tablespoons of cilantro, which has been chopped up, and your soup is complete. So, wow. well, okay, Christian, but <laughs> I have a few facts to tell you. Are you are you wanting to know a little bit more about coconut milk? Obviously, wow. coconut water is what you get in the actual coconut. The milk is the result of combining the the water with some of the meat the coconut meat. Okay. Um, I know that's super interesting. And we actually, had, we actually have a question in the Q&A about coconut yes, milk. please. Well, okay, let, let me just ask it now. Um, is, yeah. there, um, is there a substitute for coconut milk that, that maybe could work in this recipe or something else that could just kind of add that creamy, creaminess? Yes, you could definitely add cream to it, but I would probably add um, so we add one cup of coconut milk and I would add half a cup of, or not even half a cup. You probably only need about a quarter of a cup of cream. If you taste the soup before you add coconut milk, you actually, it's rich enough. You almost don't even need it. This oh. just adds an extra bit to it. So you're not losing anything by not adding it. Oh, that's great to know. Okay. There you go. Just one quick thing about your limes, one lime you'll get approximately two tablespoons of lime juice out of it. That's so. helpful to know because often you never know how much you're going to get. Exactly. And if you roll it on the counter first or you microwave it, you'll get even more juice out of it. You don't really have to put in the muscle, like, you know, the coral muscles that we've been working on here in the kitchen. So to finish the soup, we put the uh, cooked rice noodles into a bowl and then you're just going to ladle in the soup and you have your chicken and everything. And then just a garnish of, you know, if you're brave, you could put some- Do you want me to eat one? No. If you're brave, because we're not finished yet, you could eat one at the end. Okay. Uh, Thai red chilies, which we've sliced up, or some fresh limes are always nice on top. And do you understand that in 11 minutes, we just made lunch? That's amazing. And it's healthy and it's awesome and it's filling and, comforting and it's just it's perfect just like her oh shucks oh yeah absolutely that's so good i can't wait to try this uh, okay so our q a is going crazy we have to jump in there are lots of questions are we done or is there anything else you want to add uh no i'm an aquarian if that's what <laughs> questions were you can take that off the list um and i will let her speak so um fire away <laughs> Okay, so here we go. A couple of questions have come in around um, substitutes, substitutions in this recipe. Do you have an alternative to peanut butter that might work for this recipe or for others that that have that are heavy on the peanut butter? Um, you could, if you can use almond butter, you can definitely try that. You can also try any of the seed butters. You know, because okay. they will they will work well with the red curry paste for sure. Oh, that's good. Okay. And it provides the proper texture. So it's really about texture and flavor. That's yeah. what I was going to say. 
<laughs> okay, well, this question is just for Julie then. <laughs> <laughs> but Lisa, you feel free to answer. Thank you. Um, substitutions for cilantro. So you know how you can get that soapy, some people just have that soapy flavor of cilantro and when they put it in their mouth, they're like- totally It is the perfect. most polarizing herb of all time. It's the most polarizing herb. So what are the substitutes? Is parsley- Latin parsley. Did I see that? Right? Yes. Oh my gosh. She, she really does teach it. I really do listen sometimes. Um, <laughs> plat leaf parsley will, will do the trick as well. Yeah. Okay. And it's a great substitute. And okay. So here's a question about your favorite recipes. I can't believe that they would be the same from each of you from this book. Never but seen. Julie, hands down, which is the one that you need to have in your life? We all need to have in your life, in our lives. I'm going to tell you, because there's a little caveat. For the meal itself, I'm going to say the chicken tacos. They're unreal. For dessert, I've got to go with the biscotti. Lisa's okay. biscotti. This is a recipe like 25 years. She's kept it secret. And she finally let the cat out of the bag in this book. And it is like, it's, it can be, it can replace the euro. It's that good. It's a new <laughs> Forget the loony, just give a give some of a Scotty and you're good to go. <laughs> okay, Lisa, your turn. Is it the okay, Biscotti? Uh, no, it's not the Biscotti. I mean, I do love it, but um, I would have to say, and I feel like this is gonna be a you're not gonna like this answer. Mm, definitely not. But I'm gonna say it's the granola because I love, I knew she wouldn't like that answer, but I love granola and I love that it's homemade and I know everything that goes in it and it's you know, made with olive oil instead of butter and ginger. There's yeah. so much Candy. ginger and ginger. maple syrup. So fine. It, it's there's really, nothing sexy about that. I'm sorry. I knew you wouldn't like it. I don't. I don't <laughs> just, just, I, lo I love granola. Just, just it's you know, it break this up. Great. Break this up, kids. Okay, my favorite. I love granola. <laughs> okay, so here's a here's one that I think is also hotly contested. Yes. What is the most underrated healthy food, in your opinion, out there? Underrated. Underrated. Oh my God. Underrated. Are you, are you like Barbara Walters going in for the, the one two punch? Yeah. 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 You yeah. Know, anything that anything that's super healthy that people just don't pay attention to that you know you would probably say, hey, you know what? We should give we should give what persimmon a try again. <laughs> Some other kind of vegetable or fruit or ingredient. Mm, that's tough. Oh, you know what I love? I love dates and everything, like dried mm -hmm. dates cut into things, like into your salads, into, you know, into that's desserts, into say. cookies. Um, it provides a sweetness. <gasps> Tahini. Oh, that's good. Yes. Cool. Yes, girl. Do I win the, pro the door prize today? You get a free copy of the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would say tahini. Tahini and dates. Yeah. yeah. I think those are pretty good. I would agree. I think those are really. Why, what is your What is your opinion? Is that's very underrated? Underrated? Uh, it's a great question. I actually think that um, uh, uh, rice wine vinegar is underrated. Oh, I love rice wine vinegar. I you also it comes out when you talk about rice wine vinegar yeah. and granola. Right. <laughs> but and the other one that I love is sesame oil. Mm. And most of that become it actually is a new realization because I made the cold rolls the other day. And I happened to have a lot of those ingredients and I was like, why don't I use sesame oil more often? <laughs> it just pops with flavor. So Exactly, with so little. You can... I've got another one for you, sumac, the spice. Sumac. Lemony, bright, I love it. Lisa put it in the patouche salad and in a bunch of things. She was sumac crazy in this book. Yeah, yeah. Okay, listen, there's like 15 more questions. I have to get through them here. Um, okay, so what is the most popular or the best kid-friendly dinner recipe you think in this book? 
Um, I would say, well, they're all, um, okay, so probably they, the sesame crusted chicken fingers are really kid friendly baked. and they're adult friendly as well because they have a slaw and so they're a little bit more baked, than not fried. Um, for kids who, who don't like the taste of fish, but you want to get them eating fish, the Lisa's filet fish healthy version. It's unbelievable. Baked as well. Baked, mm -hmm. um, with a incredible tartar sauce so um she is the golden arches of healthy eating um i would also say i mean there's so many yeah I, you're stumping us okay next thing, next question okay um someone watching loves the ladle you're holding on to or we're holding on to where did you find it and where do you buy your kitchen equipment William Sonoma is that ladle. And I believe we bought it actually to use in the shoot of the book. Um, kitchen equipment, pots and pans. Uh, I do a lot at, at Crate and Barrel, William Sonoma. Uh, Nello Cucina in Toronto is a great spot yeah. for, for, you know, the, the yeah. real cook. Yeah, the pots, pans. That's, that's, a, yeah, that's great because I know that sometimes you just, that it's the right utensil that makes. It makes exactly. all the difference. Like I couldn't live without an immersion blender or a microplane grater. Oh, really? A microplane grater. And I also oh, I like that. a good pair of kitchen scissors. I use them to cut herbs. This microplane grater is, it changes your life when you have to zest things or shave Parmesan or chocolate into your mouth or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah watch off, off camera <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's good I'm, I'm gonna have to get myself one because i've seen it used on lots of cooking shows and it's one of those things i just say oh i'll just use a grater but it's so, but it, it becomes so much finer with this so Christian, you're a big boy you're allowed to use this tool i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it all right one more question and then we're gonna go into the draw okay. um so this is really about kind of what's next for the two of you. Now we know this has just come out. We're gonna we're gonna get all excited about people posting photos from the recipes that they make from it. But and and I'm sure you just need two minutes to breathe because this is not easy to put together just like that, right? What's next though? I'm sure there's something up your sleeves. Well, we're gonna keep eating, feeding, cooking, serving. Um, we're doing a lot of, of experiential stuff now. So kind of like this for, for corporations who want to, you know, we, we've all become digital Mavis. experts. So, uh, you know, people who are looking to do that sort of team bonding or bring people together, we've been doing that sort of cooking for, for companies and really just kind of keeping our business going on the Bite Me More side and also Bite Me Digital, which is our agency. So we've got lots of clients that want to get their messages out there online and, and we're, we're helping them do that. Amazing. And is there anything you want to share with this amazing audience who've spent time, you know, absorbing everything that you've taught us today? One last piece of advice, thoughts? One last piece of advice. Um, try to get in my sister's bubble because she does make the best <laughs> food. And if you don't get around to cooking that night and you think all for dinner is Lucky Charms, think again, because she'll do delivery. Her phone number's in the book. I forget, <laughs> but I got in a lot of trouble for that, just so you know, from our mother. <laughs> That's hilarious. And every person who calls her, I'm giving $20 to charity. What? Yeah. Wow. Start calling me. She said, she said that you can't put my number in. And I go, yeah, every time you get a call, I'll give 20 bucks to charity. So that's amazing. Um, that's, that's so cool. Well, we'll, um, we'll certainly take you up on that one. We're at time, unfortunately, how quickly half an hour passes with the two of you. We'll, we'll certainly have to do it again. Yes. Yeah, happy to do a couple hours straight. <laughs> yeah, that would be super fun. Uh, well, listen, thank you both for participating in this amazing, amazing talk. We're so thrilled to have you, uh, Julie, as an alum, and Lisa, one day you'll be an alum too, uh, <laughs> Ryerson University. We're too late. <laughs> but that said, we're so delighted to have the two of you on this uh, book talk series that we have for Ryerson Alumni and Friends.
thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having us and yay, of, Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for everyone who's participated watching today. And uh, just so you know that we're going to be sending you an email with this video so you can watch it again. And again. Uh, you're going to also get links to uh, be able to purchase this book. And without further ado, the two winners of the book are Lori Skinner and Grace Nelson. So congratulations oh, to the two of you. Yes, absolutely. Julie, Lisa, we love you. Thank you for an amazing you. half an hour. Bye, me, baby. <laughs> Bye for now.